Hey guys, what's up? Louis for Gorilla Poker, another high stakes hand history review where we're gonna go through some of the hands played by the best players in the world and try to learn some of the ins and outs of what's going on. And as always, we're taking everything that's happening very seriously, even though some of these plays might look like micro stakes plays. When they're made by experts, there are very good reasons for all of them. Kind of like in chess, where you see someone hanging a piece and the other guy not taking it, and this keeps going. At high level of play, the reasons for the same looking things are very, very different. So, first hand is gonna involve Tsuka and Dude 1. It's three handed with Sis involved as well. And we get a 7 3 3 rainbow board. Very important always to think about ranges. 7 3 3 rainbow is extremely, extremely blank, right? There's pocket threes, pocket sevens, and, and like ace three suited, and maybe big blind can hit a few more hands, and that's it. Potentially the kind of board where you could go for stacks with over pairs, but depends because cold calling ranges tend to be a bit tight. And here we have Tsuka C betting half pot, dude calling and sis folding. Now, generally, I recommend not C betting in these kind of cold calling scenarios due to the cold calling range having kind of a high density of pocket pairs like pocket threes, pocket sevens, and ace three suited, just higher density of these hands. So, I think as a simplification, Tsuka just not betting would probably be my recommendation for you guys in this spot. We get the Jack of Diamonds turn, Tsuka over betting, dude calling, three of Diamonds river, and Tsuka going all in. Now, presumably, Tsuka say, you know, I can do this with aces, kings, and queens. I think otherwise, this kind of bet sizing scheme and even betting in this spot doesn't really make sense. The big question you need to ask is can he actually do this with aces, kings, and queens? I mean, here he got the three run out, which is like a dream river run out, but, but let, let's say you get a 10 on the river, a 9, a deuce, a 5, something that improves some of your opponent's hands. Can you actually go for stacks with aces, kings, and queens? If yes, this is a logical play. If if no, not. And we'll give Tsuka the benefit of the doubt that he can do this. And look at the showdown. Tsuka shows up with ace, king of hearts, and dude one shows up with sevens. Very easy play for dude one. Tsuka, when you guys see ace, king of hearts, you might think it's quite random. And if you want to kind of go into what is this guy thinking, I think it's actually quite clear. He's thinking, oh, look, two hearts. The threes are a spade and a club. So I block ace three suited, I share cards with aces and kings. So this is the type of hand I want to bluff with. I don't want to bluff with six five suited or ten nine suited. Those hands don't accomplish anything. And he decides to go for it with ace of hearts, king of hearts. I can see the logic behind it. Like I said, as far as sensitivity to the ranges, I'm going to have to trust that, that this is okay. Personally, I'm not sure. Sincerely not sure that this is an okay board to go bet bet chum on in, in this three-way position pair uh, with a hand like aces or kings. But if you're doing it, I can see why you'd pick this hand to, to bluff with, and, and the suits are not an accident. Like, this is not going crazy with any ace-king, it's a very specific ace-king. Next hand. This hand's actually really interesting. So Zurgo crazes, Aurora three bets, and Zurgo calls. Small blind versus button. And we have a half pot C bet on deuce 4-4 four, four rainbow. I've already mentioned in previous videos when the boards are this low and bricky, you need to bet bigger than third pot, third pot bet just doesn't cut it because you get floated too much. So we have this half pot bet, maybe a very wide range bet, it is a good board for Aurora, and Zurgok makes a small in position raise. The reason to go so small has to do with the stack to pot ratio. It's a three bet pot and there's not that much money behind, there's kind of less worry about implied odds by the other player, so it makes sense to just kind of raise smaller. It's called leveraging your stack. It, it's, a, it's a concept you guys should be familiar with. Generally, when there's tons of money behind, you need to be worried about implied odds. When there isn't, you're worried more about direct odds. And then something like a, a min raise, imagine your opponent has king-queen and you have sevens. King-queen has 12% to hit on the next card. You're denying them that 12%, so you don't really need to go bigger than this. So yeah, min raise, Aurora calls. At this point, we'd expect Avara to 3-bet a, a decent amount of his over pairs, but not all of them. You need to keep some traps. And then float a ton, like king-queen, ace-queen, ace-king. Definitely with backdoors, maybe sometimes without, are going to continue. Eight of diamonds turn, Avara checks, and Zergo keeps firing. Again, kind of leveraging his stack size. 
Zurgok range at this point could certainly have hands like Queen's Jacks, Fence Nines, Eights, also Forex. But yeah, board's bricky enough where if you have an overpair, you can probably just go for it. So Zurgok bets, Aurora calls. River, Eight of Clubs, Aurora checks, Zurgok shoves, and Aurora calls, and we see a pretty surprising showdown. So Aurora called down with Ace King High, not believing Zurgok, and, and rightly so, because Zurgok had 10 of hearts, 9 of hearts. What's actually going on in this hand? You know, deuce, deuce, 4 rainbow if you want to pick some bluffs. Zurgok saying, you know, I'm gonna have outs to nice pairs with my 10 and 9, and I'm gonna block pocket 10s and pocket 9s. Also gonna maybe get some hands that dominate me to fold, like Jack 10, Queen 10, King 10, Ace 9, etc. So... This hand choice by Zurgok to raise flop, barrel, turn, shove river kind of makes sense, especially on the flop and the turn. I think by the time you get to the river with 10-9, uh, you don't have any special properties for your hand anymore, but it's whatever, it's okay. Because I, I think Kavora would fast play 10s and 9s before this, so... Uh, 10 and 9 are not doing anything by the river, but certainly on the flop and on the turn, they're kind of cleaning their outs and blocking some of the continue range. It's hard not to block the continue range, but say you have ace 5, ace 5 does not exactly block the continue range. So, seems like a reasonable play by Zurgo. And Avrora is calling down with ace king. Might seem crazy to you guys, but this is one of those spots where you need to call some bluff catchers. You don't have enough over pairs in your range where you get to stack off with only over pairs. If you stack off only over pairs, you're just massively overfolding. Zurgok's line is printing. So if you guys look at this hand and you think, wow, I don't think anyone would ever call me with ace high in my games. I think they'd only call over pairs. And this is probably a good bluffing line in your games. Just something to keep in mind. So my apologies, my throat is acting up a bit, so I'm going to end the video here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave any feedback, questions, thoughts, comments you have in the comments, and we'll see you guys next time.